Hello, YouTube. Alright, so I follow quite a few other artists on YouTube, and that means that my subscription box is often filled with pieces from the YouTube Artist Collective. Um, for those who haven't heard of this before, it's a group of very talented YouTube artists who get together over Facebook, and there's a theme voted on, and every artist within the collective draws something for it. And one of the cool things is, the collective also encourages artists who aren't officially part of the group to draw for the same theme, and then post and share their videos. And this month's theme was steampunk, which is a genre that I've been sort of on and off interested in for quite a few years now. I draw a lot of Victorian-inspired stuff. Um, particularly for my webcomic, which is set in the 1850s. But it's been a very long time since I d did anything for the sort of steampunk, Victorian fantasy, throwing historical accuracy out the window kind of thing. So I decided to take the opportunity to do a new video, and do a new major detailed piece, and revisit a old character of mine. So, I wanted this piece to be an illustration of kind of this character's theme or vibe without really depicting any particular moment from her story. Um, her name's Minerva. I used her for a NaNoWriMo novel several years ago. Um, and I kind of describe her as sort of a reverse gender steampunk Doctor Who. So she's a time travel traveler, and she goes about having adventures and being sort of vaguely Victorian, strange technology themed. Um, so I wanted this piece to illustrate a sort of call to adventure. The viewers being invited into this interesting fantasy world filled with books and stories, whereas the outside world, the place outside the portal, is this sort of very mundane, very sterile, kind of office park environment in the modern world. Um, this was a fairly complicated piece for me, as you can notice by the massive numbers of layers I'm using. Um, I basically did several rough sketches that showed the entire area, and then every time I ran into something that was a bit more detailed or nuanced, I'd go back in and create a new sketch layer, and I'd use that to kind of polish up the area and clean it up and make it a little bit easier for me to do the line art over top. Um, I also used a lot of perspective guidelines. You can kind of see them there in the background in the pink. Uh, those were done in paint tool size um, line art layer function which makes them really easy to move around and adjust any time I needed to put them into place. That was particularly useful for the background sections, like here where I'm doing the industrial buildings, because it means that I can just move one into place and get the perspective guide I needed where I needed it, and then move it back around when I needed to finish another section of the piece. Um, so that's a very helpful little technique. I could do a full tutorial about that. If people are interested, just let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. Because the background is very industrial, I made a lot of use of the straight line tool, which is usually something I like to avoid. But in this case, I thought it was very helpful for getting those very crisp, clean lines that make it look very modern and sort of sterile. And then I went back in afterwards with just a regular pen tool and my tablet and I kind of cleaned things up and made things work together, and I filled in a lot more lines that weren't quite so perfectly straight, so that things would look a bit better with the more organic line art in the front. Um, the frame was kind of interesting. I'm not entirely sure I'm happy with the results. I kind of wanted it to look like a sort of Rococo picture frame or portrait frame that had kind of melted. Um, and use that to depict the sort of portal she's opening up into this library space beyond. I'm reasonably pleased with the results, but I'm worried it looks just a little bit too sturdy to make it seem like a magical portal, and just a little bit too magical portal to make it look like an actual picture frame. But I'm still glad I tried, because it was kind of an interesting idea. 
So here in the background for the library, I've got, again, a separate layer, just so it's easier for me to keep things apart. I probably should have used the perspective guidelines a little bit more for this section, because I did notice later on I've made a few mistakes. But it's also supposed to look a little bit more ragtag and organic, so I think that ends up working. Um, I wanted this to be a standalone piece, so you didn't need to know anything about the character to get something out of it but there's a few little tidbits like the clock and the nowhere library sign that are references to this character's story and they won't really show up in the finished piece when it's printed or displayed at its original size so they're mostly just there for me and to keep me interested in the piece and occupied while I was working on it. So I guess a little bit more about the character. Um, this is an art video so I don't want to go into too much detail about her but she was basically a sort of um, chaotic, neutral, adventurer, roguish sort of figure. This immortal person who'd gotten so bored with life that she decided what she wanted to do was collect books, and that still managed to get her into all sorts of trouble. I wrote her for a NaNoWriMo novel, National Novel Writing Month, so I wrote something like 60,000 words in uh, 30 days, and the story sort of ran right off the rails and out into the middle of nowhere. <laughs> um, so I haven't really done anything with it since, but it was a lot of fun to write at the time, and the character is still someone I think about quite often, and someone I like to do something with. I'm just not really sure exactly what that something's going to be yet. Um, yeah, I'm not 100% happy with how the colors turned out in this piece. Um, I think they're all right, but I struggled a lot to get them to that stage. Um, you can see here I'm doing a lot of fiddling around with filters and just changing colors up a little bit. I wasn't quite sure where I wanted it to be brighter, where I wanted it to be darker. I think the piece probably would have been stronger if I'd done some color thumbnails for the color composition. I did several black and white thumbnails on paper before I began, but if I were doing a piece this big again, I'd try and remember to actually bring some of those thumbnails into Paint Tool Sci and throw some colors on so I had a bit more of an idea about where I was going with that. As it is, again, I'm still pretty pleased. I mostly solved the problem by adding massive quantities of sparkles and glowy bits because I find those tend to help just about any picture look a little bit more interesting. But it's still a little bit of a cop-out. There we go, adding a few um, extra layers on top just to get the coloring right. Um, the glows also kind of helped draw the eye forward. I wanted people to kind of look at the main character first and then sort of draw their eye upwards up to the clock. <laughs> the writing for the forward paper pieces, that was probably one of the most tedious parts of doing this picture. Um, because I find the best way to get that sort of little tiny background writing to look realistic, even from a distance, is to be writing actual sentences. Um, so most of these are complete uh, gibberish. They're just scraps of poetry or whatever I was thinking about at the time. But just keeping them in that sentence structure really helps to keep the flow of the longer lines of text looking realistic. Um, and for this very forward piece of paper, I ended up writing out almost a little bit of a story. It was just whatever I could come up with at the top of my head. But the text there was going to be visible enough that I thought it would be better to have actual words as opposed to sort of scribbly nonsense in the background. Um, yeah, so I'm just finishing up with a few extra filters and adding more shiny bits because, again, those very rarely hurt. Um, I saved shading the figure in the middle of the character till the end because I knew it was something I was going to look forward to. I do a fair number of backgrounds because, again, I run a comic, but I'm still 
more familiar with shading characters, and frankly I find it a little bit more fun. So I knew that if I saved it till the end, I'd be a lot less likely to half-ass it, as opposed to saving some of the background elements for the end, in which case I'd get bored through shading my 900th book. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much the piece. Uh, this is one of my first voice recordings over an artwork, so I hope it's been reasonable and you've enjoyed it. If there's anything else you'd like to see on this channel, please leave me a note in the comments below. I will definitely be reading all of them. And if you're interested in seeing more of my artwork, I hope you'll hit the subscribe button at the end and come back and see some more. So I hope to see you guys again soon.